sorry to bother you, but perhaps you can help me? What can I do for you? Well, I'm trying to get to the 14th floor for a meeting with Mr. Foster, but I'm having a bit of trouble with the elevators. Well, this is the 18th. There's a slight problem with the elevators right now. Miss Hatchet is taking care of it. Mr. Foster is very understanding. I'm sure he won't mind you being a little late. Who's Miss Hatchet? One of the security directors. Her office is on this floor. Do you know Mr. Foster? Yes, I've spoken to him a few times. He's passionate about ancient art, like me. He's got a wonderful private collection. He's donated a lot of pieces to the Metropolitan Museum, you know. Have you seen him recently? I did see him about two weeks ago. He looked a little preoccupied. He told me he was on the edge of a very important discovery. One that would call into question everything we know about history. But he wouldn't say any more than that. Is Miss Hatchet your supervisor? Yes. And she's not an easy person, I can tell you. She's always interfering. Like with the way we dress, how we do our hair. She's real strict about all that, and I just love fashion. She won't let me dress how I like to. Well, I think you look absolutely ravishing. But if you don't mind me saying so, I think you'd look even better if you let your hair down. Loose hair isn't in fashion now. I try to keep up with the times. But it isn't easy with Miss Hatchet. With Miss Garbo here in the office, I've never seen so many visitors. You a journalist? You looking for an interview? No. Actually, I have an appointment on the 14th floor. In that case, you're in the wrong place. This is reception for Cineworld Magazine. A friend of mine who works here, Ellen O'Connor, is getting picked on by her supervisor. I hope you don't have that kind of problem. Oh, you know Ellen. Poor thing. They're really strict about her hair and what she wears. And she just loves fashion. It's getting her down a bit. Do you have anything that might cheer her up? Take her a copy of our latest edition. There's a very interesting article about next season's hairstyles. There are some movie stars saying how long hair is coming back into style. You know, like right down over the shoulders? That might give Ellen some ideas. If you are one of them pen pushers, you can just push off. Miss Garbo's in a rendezvous, and she don't want to be disturbed. Don't worry, I'm not here to bother her. Are you her bodyguard? Yeah, a thing like Miss Garbo draws the crowds, you know? And there's folks who have a tendency to get a little pushy. Yeah, the price of fame. But not all cinema lovers are like that. Take the young lady who works in reception. She's a big Garbo fan, but I'm sure she knows how to behave. You were saying the young lady in the reception? You know her? A little. Why? Well, I gotta say, she did kind of catch my eye. So if she loves the movies, the signed photo of Miss Garbo's gotta make her happy, right? You know her first name? Um... I don't remember it. Uh, too bad. I have to think of something else.
Sorry to bother you again, Miss O'Connor. Just take a look at this magazine. The article about the next thing in hairstyles? Seems I was right. Goodness! It does indeed. Well, the hell with Miss Hatchet. I have to admit something. I came back down just to see you. I was starting to miss your charming company. No, oh, is there something you need? I'd like to know your name. After all, you know mine. It only seems fair. You're right. My name's Julian. Oh, a very pretty name. Who knows? Maybe one day it'll be a famous one in the movies. I found out something that might interest you. I know the receptionist's first name. She's called Julia. Hey, thanks for the tip. I figured a little dedication by Miss Gargoyle should get me noticed by the little lady, huh? Hey, if I can avoid done the favor, you know, just let me know. With your job, I suppose you notice a lot of things about the places Miss Garbo visits, don't you? Yeah, I keep my eyes peeled. Slightest hint of danger, and I'm on to it. You haven't noticed anything suspicious here in the Empire State Building, have you? I heard that some bad guys might be trying a bit of sabotage. Hmm. Two hours ago, I accompanied Miss Garbo to the 12th floor. She wanted to say hi to a friend. I noticed some suspicious looking guys hanging around the corridor. Do you know what they were up to? I questioned them, but they weren't very chatty. All I found out is they was waiting for someone called Lansky. What's a pretty girl like you doing sitting all alone in the corridor? You waiting for someone? 
No, I'm just on my break. I don't feel so stifled here by all those accountancy files. How about you? You look lost. I don't know the Empire State Building very well. But don't worry, I'll find what I'm looking for. Can I get to the 14th floor from here? You can usually, but the maintenance guys are checking the elevator machinery. Afraid you might have to wait. Have you noticed anything unusual on this floor? Well, since this morning, there's been a lot of people coming and going. I've noticed a few people who don't look like they work here. They look a bit, well, dubious. Do you know someone called Lansky? I do, unfortunately. I used to even work for him, but I quit right away when I found out his business wasn't exactly legal. Lansky didn't trust any of his employees. He used to spy on them the whole time. I couldn't stand that. Does this Lansky guy have offices in the Empire State Building? Right here on this floor. The door of his office is right opposite the bulletin board. It says here on this rota that employees must observe office hours from 9 o'clock to 6 o'clock. This photo must have been taken at the inauguration of the Empire State Building. There's a date on the decoration there, but I can't make it out. This here plan shows a series of floors, minus 2, 8, 13, 7, and 14. The boss was right. She found a way to get past us. It was just as well we stopped that broad. Minus 2, 8, 13, 7, and 14. Got it. She's not hurt. She's just out for the count. There's a funny smell. It smells like chloroform. I just found a woman unconscious in her office. I think she's been attacked. Quickly, uh, show me which office. My God, Miss Hatchet. Poor Miss Hatchet. I do hope the emergency room will take care of her. She's not always easy to get on with, but I wouldn't wish it on anyone to be attacked like that. I just wonder who could have done such a thing. Miss O'Connor, you look absolutely stunning. I sure am glad I managed to convince you. Quite the charmer. Thanks for the tip. Maybe I could take you out to dinner once I've taken care of my business here. <laughs> How could I possibly refuse an invitation like that? 
And from a guy with such nerve. See you soon. Are you Mr. Brooks? You're late. I got a bit diverted. I hope I haven't put you out too much, Miss... Pennington? Not in the least. We'll be able to talk more after your meeting. Mr. Foster is waiting for you in his study. If you'd care to go in... Welcome, Mr. Brooks. I'm Charles Randolph Foster. Did you have a good trip? It was a little bumpy. I made the acquaintance of Lou Garetti. He said you wanted to meet me. There are one or two things I'd like to know. Mr. Brooks, I have here something that is rightly yours. Allow me to return it to you. Your father's medallion. This medallion. I remember now. My father showed it to me once when I was a child. I'd completely forgotten its existence. Your father would no doubt have wished for you to have this inheritance. He didn't have time to get it to you. The Great War took him from us. I know he was convinced he'd come back alive. But how do you come to have his medallion? The main thing's not to wonder how I come to have it, but how we're gonna make use of it. Because it isn't just a simple bronze trinket. Your inheritance is part of a mystery that could well change the history of mankind forever! 
Mr. Brooks, I am currently involved in the financing of some very important archaeological work. Your medallion is the key to forgotten knowledge, the key to this planet's most ancient civilization. I'm talking about Atlantis. Atlantis? But that's just a myth. You can't seriously believe in it. I assure you I'm not a madman, Mr. Brooks. I've accumulated many clues, and over time my doubts have turned to certainties. Atlantis truly did exist. Your father's medallion will provide incontrovertible proof. But we have to be careful, for we're not the only ones searching. Is that why I was attacked? Those guys were looking for a medallion that would lead them to Atlantis? They're working for a man called Elliot, who is himself working for an occult society that wishes to get hold of the precious Atlantean knowledge. Keeps getting better. This is all nuts. It's very hard to believe. What I'm telling you is nothing but the truth, Mr. Brooks. Incredible as it may seem. What is it that motivates you? Maybe you actually want to use Atlantean knowledge just to further your own interests? I can assure you my intentions are entirely honest. I gave you what your father left for you and nothing obliged me to do that. That's true, but why set off in search of Atlantis? For years now, I've been collecting antiques and donating them to the great museums of the world. But all the treasures I've managed to pick up in the past are nothing compared to the heritage that Atlantis represents. I want this heritage to be a benefit to the greatest possible number of people. How very honorable of you. Like me, the Thule Group has been searching for Atlantis for a long time. I've been most alarmed by the plans of the fanatics who make up this group. They want to dominate others and impose their values on the entire world. Such madness! They must be prevented from accomplishing their ends. I'd really like to know how you found the down. After your father died, this little object had quite an eventful time of it. It passed through many hands, traveled across many oceans. I finally managed to get it back from a pawn shop. I at least knew its true value, so I kept it somewhere safe. What's so special about it? Everything leads me to believe that it was made in Atlantis. When I learned that Elliot was trying to get hold of it, I had you followed to keep you from harm. You see, Elliot was convinced you had it in your possession. So, I've not heard the last of him. He'll try to get it again. Well, no, actually. To get Elliot off our backs for a while, I had a copy of it made. I put this copy into my collection of antiquities here in the Empire State Building. Hmm, kind of decoy. I just bet that's got something to do with the sabotage in the building. You got it. I arranged for Elliot to find out where this object he was so desperate to find was. He's taken the bait, and he's stolen the fake medallion with the help of Lansky, the New York gangster's gang. Now Elliot thinks he's got his beat. What exactly are you looking for? The location of Atlantis? What role does the medallion play in all this? According to all the legends and archaeological sources that I've studied, the way to find the sunken continent will be revealed by a mysterious relic. And where is this relic to be found? I don't know. It's hidden in a sanctuary somewhere, behind impenetrable closed doors. These doors may be opened by a key made up of three medallions. Your medallion is one of them. So there's more than one medallion? Where are the other two? They are in the possession of an archaeologist and a former army officer. They both seemed interested in working with me, but I've had no news of them for several weeks. They have to be found so they can join us in searching for the Atlantean relic, and then Atlantis itself. I suppose you're telling me all this because you want me to be part of your plan. Brooks, I need people I can trust right now. Aren't you excited at the prospect of finding Atlantis? The lost secrets of that civilization will bring great advances to humanity. Atlantean knowledge and its hitherto unknown sciences will allow us to make enormous progress. Indeed, and I share your vision, but are you sure I'm the most suitable person to help you? Your father and his medallion link you to the mystery of Atlantis. I have no doubt that during your quest, you will learn more about your heritage. Please accept to become my associate. Tell me more about this Elliot and the group he's working for. The group's called Fool. Its members believe themselves to be the sole legitimate heirs of Atlantis. They want to get their hands on the lost knowledge to use it for nefarious ends. There's a lot at stake. And Elliot? Fool brought in James Elliot to work for them. He's a treasure hunter. He's completely fearless and he has no scruples about using violence to get what he wants. It was his men that attacked you on the Hindenburg. All right, then I'll help you. This is the first time I've ever gone off in search of a myth. 
But that doesn't worry me. There's a first time for everything. I've always been an adventurer at heart. It's kind of nice to think I'll be helping things along a bit. You won't regret it, Brooks. The first step will be to find the two other bearers of Atlantean medallions. My assistant, Miss Pennington, will provide you with whatever information I have been able to glean. With the help of the medallions, I have no doubt that the road to Atlantis will soon reveal itself. I appreciate your optimism. Watch out for Elliot. He'll surely be trying to get there before you. Good luck, Brooks. an associate of Mr. Foster. He has entrusted you with an important mission. First of all, you have to find Miss Sullivan, the historian and archaeologist, who, according to our latest information, is in China, in Macau. Not exactly just down the street, huh? Everything has been arranged, so the journey should present no problem. Mr. Foster is a man of many resources. So I understand. The second person you must contact is Captain Nathaniel Blackwood. We know very little about him, other than that he used to be an intelligence officer before leaving the army. This Captain Blackwood, is he in China too? Um, to tell the truth, we have no idea. The last time he was seen was in Germany, but he seems to have moved on. We're doing everything we can to find some trace of him. We'll keep you informed. I'm confident you are. You seem very efficient. I take pride in giving satisfaction to anyone who works with me, Mr. Brooks. Uh, yeah. Well, hey, nice statue. That sphinx in front of your desk. You're to be provided with a truly exceptional mode of transport for your journey. The Hindenburg itself. As soon as you're ready to depart, it'll take you to Macau. The biggest airship in the world? All for me? Are you kidding? Never on company time, Mr. Brooks. Mr. Foster is a personal friend of Hugo Eckner, the head of the Zeppelin Company. They've known each other for many years. An adventure such as yours calls for an uncommon method of transport. Your name, Pennington. Is that British? I love England. I spent several years there. It shows. You appear somewhat educated. I like cultured people with whom I can have long and passionate conversations. <laughs> <laughs>